Hey guys, this is a quick guide on how to set up the SkyNation server for, this time, for the first time. Anyone that owns the uh, the full game can log into it, like player servers and host your own. Uh, which it's cool. You can have like you set up your own experience and you can set up mods and things like that. And, uh, and obviously you can add use the admin commands and things like that if you want to play a specific style or if you just want to build or anything like that really. Or you can sort of play a sort of a semi. I mean the game's not built around single player but you could play that if you wanted to if you just had a local server that you ran so this, this is going to run you through setting up your server first thing you want to do go to the Sky Nations website skynations.net uh, go to the download page as we are at the moment and the server download is always on the page um, as you can see the uh, I've already downloaded it ahead of time it's in a zip file uh, zip files are just like a compress it's like a folder that's sort of compressed and you can uncompress it most uh, you might not have WinRAR, which is what I have to uncompress it, but you... Like, the OS comes with something to uncompress zip files anyway, so I'm just going to extract that. And we get a file. And this is the this is the actual server. So, um, setting up the first time with the server, it's going to ask you a couple of questions about how you want the world to generate and things like that. And that's going to take a little bit of time to generate that world. So, the first thing we want to do is just run the server. Um, so it's going to run the server, the server is going to start up, start loading all the scripts and things like that. Um, ignore the, it doesn't matter that it says could, can't find the player ignore file, it just me, that's just how it tracks how different players use the ignore command on each other. If it doesn't exist, doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem. So the first thing it's going to ask you, every, when you start a server for the first time, i.e. where it hasn't generated anything, it's going to ask you how many sectors. And the sectors are like, the if you've played the game already, when you press M on the map, you see all this like all these sectors conjoined by jump gates and stuff like that. That's how many of those you want to do. So you want to think about roughly how many players you're going to be playing with and how like sort of spread that you want them. Obviously, like on the community servers, we have 100, and I think that's enough really. Um, you want to think about like the density of players. So if say if you had a thousand and you hope to have like a uh, hundred players on your server or something like that, then it's it's not dense no one's going to run into anyone so you need to sort of think about problems like that um, obviously the higher the number number the uh, the longer it's going to take to initially generate all the map because it does all the, rather than generating it as people play it does it all at once to get it out of the way so uh, for the example I'm going to say 10 I'd probably recommend 100 or so uh, or less like 50 to 100 it's probably a good number uh, if, if you're setting up a, a semi-serious server so I'm going to say 10 um, and it's just going to tick away for a minute um, while it generates the land. And as we run the server for the first time, it's also going to create a settings file, which we'll get to in a minute, where we can set up like the name, who's the root admin, um, and there's loads of like parameters that you can sort of mess with and change. So it's generated the ten sectors. It now wants to know how many capital gate systems we want on the map. But now the capital gates are for those that haven't played or haven't run into them are a special system uh, or sector rather that, use, that uses one of the ex it replaces one of the existing sectors and it makes a big gate in that sector and that sector allows uh, uh, people in nations to jump to their capital if they have their capital assigned to that gate you can only have a capital assigned to one gate so you typically want like maybe less ten percent or less um, of your sectors as gates because if you have too many it's kind of like pointless there's loads everywhere if you have too less there's not you will kind of like the game will pretty much randomly spread them out so you want eno enough that depending on where the, the people want to live on the map that they can get to it relatively easily without too much hassle so we chose 10 sectors so we only really want one because it's we're, we're generating a small map for the purpose of the guide so I'm just going to hit one. Oh, sorry, that should have been yes or no, so we should have said why, but it's accepted as yes anyway, so we're going to hit one. And it's going to. So the server started up, you can actually join it right now, um, but we're not going to do that. First of all, we're going to go back, and as I said about the settings, we're going to change some of the settings and uh, set up some configurations that we want. So we're just going to close that, which closes the server, and we're going to go into the game data uh, folder. And we can see that it's generated a bunch of files. Some of them already existed, some of them didn't. Uh, the server settings file doesn't exist until you run the server the first time, and it sort of sets it all as default. So what we're going to click is uh, Edit, 
and that's going to open up a notepad. So we've got a bunch of like, kind of looks like code, but it's not really code, um, with different options. And basically, in between these uh, left and right arrow tags, we can we can put the information that we want. So uh, I'll just run through the tags as they exist, so you have a bit of an idea of what they do. The listen tag is the IP to listen for uh, the connections on. So when a new player connects, this isn't really relevant if you're running like a local server, but sometimes. Um, certain like especially hosting setups like professional setups have systems where they need to listen to a specific IP or the IPs change internally and things like that that can be an issue so 000 is like a default listen everywhere for all connections the next tag is name so this will be what it appears as on the server lobby in the in game so when you obviously when you go in the game you see community server you can see community server 2 and like everything else this is going to be what it's going to called uh, so we've got my Sky Nation server. Okay, so we probably want to call. Calls. So we're just going to call it Ben's tutorial server. Uh, the next setting is the port. The port is the the actual port that it uses for connections and uh, for like the network networking and multiplayer. So uh, a side note for the port is that if you're planning for other players to join your server, you need to be able to. Uh, either DMZ your router, uh, assuming you have a router, DMZ your router or port forward and this will be the port that you need to port forward. You can actually change it uh, in case you want to run multiple servers, you can't have the same two servers on the same port uh, but the default is 25,000, that's what you'll want to port forward on your routers. Unfortunately I can't tell you how to port forward on your router because every router is like make and even the models have like a ton of differences on how you do that but there are like a pretty good set of websites uh, that that detail it for lots of, for like just globally over across all models, and I'll put a link to that in the description. A whitelist isn't currently used, but it'll eventually sort of be a flag to say yes, I, only these players can join, and that's uh, that's good for when your your server's public and you only want your friends to be able to join. That's that's kind of what you want. And that max players is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, defaults to 100, but you can put it to whatever you like. Um, and the public is so the public just basically defines whether you want it to appear on the server list. If you want it to appear on the server list, you'll have true. If you don't, which in this case I don't, so I'm going to put false. Don't want anyone joining while we're doing the doing this guide. <laughs> I'm going to put false. Uh, auth players is not one that's used. Um, it's sort of something that I use internally while debugging, but it doesn't have any use outside of that. So next we go to root admin, and you'll see that it starts off with this. Uh, it's not quite like the others because it doesn't have a value. Uh, the root admin is the person that has automatic admin uh, in the game when they just when they log in, um, and this person is the person that can grant admin to any other players. You don't, there isn't a list here. This is like the the top admin. So I'm gonna put myself my uh, username in there. Um, ban names and ban IPs are like automatically populated in a different file actually now, so these are depreciated what they are now. And the seed is the the random number that it bases generating all the world off. Um, but obviously, we just generate all the world, so we don't actually need to change that now because it's already all done. The MOTD, which stands for Message of the Day, if you're sort of familiar with MMOs, is the message that players receive when they join the server for the first. Well, every time when they log in, they they get this message. Um, you can actually change this in game as well with a with a command. So this might be like, oh, my rules are blah 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 blah, or welcome to my server, so on and so on. So I just say hello, welcome to my test server. The time compression is uh, basically how fast time moves in the game world. You can change this in game. Um, but if you want like a save change and for it always be that way every time you start the server up this is where you do it time compression uh, the default is 100 which is a couple of days it's at, like well, quite a few days a day um, obviously it's 100 times a second passing right so a thousand seconds pass uh, sorry a hundred the seconds pass where one would um, you I think really you want a couple of days to pass through through um, like and players play so they actually get a feeling of the world sort of moving on 
Uh, but that's totally up to you. You can also put it to zero where it doesn't change at all. Um, or you can put it to minus if you wanted to and have time run backwards, but that'd be quite strange. <laughs> the, the virtual file system is actually depreciated. Some of these settings are depreciated and they're just kind of kept in for legacy. Keeping memory is also depreciated. Um, turret safety range is also depreciated, but claim range is not. So the claim range is... Um, in the game you can claim areas uh, like as, as, as your nations and, and defend it and they have like specific uses and things like that but uh, the, the actual claim range denotes how far away that people can claim how far I have to away is a limit of jumps uh, they have to be from spawn so at the moment it defaults to six so you have to be six jumps away from spawn on the map this kind of stops people from just capping all the way around the map and uh, all the way around the uh, the spawn so people can't actually leave the spawn so you want it relatively high just to give people a lot of space and to sort of pre well, it doesn't 100% prevent that but it does um, mitigate it significantly it's very hard for any group to capture enough that for the branching effect of six jumps away is, is way too many is way too many systems for anyone to sort of all pick up the tip rate is basically how many updates the server does per second so the server is obviously processing what's going on in the world and uh, how it step how many steps forward it does in that time um, obviously the, the the higher it is the more accurate it is but in reality it defaults to 100 but in reality you probably only need about 30 ticks um, even in like 15 it's going to be very difficult for players to even notice a difference um, uh, you definitely don't need over a hundred because you you want there's not <laughs> there's not enough difference for the players to specifically notice. Uh, the max tourist represents how many uh, turrets in a claimed area a um, a uh, nation can have. So uh, the mo like the defaults to 64, so they can only have 64 turrets in one system that they've claimed, but they can have 128 turrets in two systems. It is a cap per system, not for their entire nation. Uh, this is the, this helps performance significantly, and it also just helps um, the claims not being these indestructible, uh, like impenetrable fortresses. So the the next parts are a fairly new thing that I've just added called low event player, medium high, medium event player count, and high event player count, and these all represent how many players are required for certain events to pop up. Currently. Uh, as I'm recording this, the only one that matters is high event player count, but soon the low and medium ones will also matter. So basically, uh, the events happen at random time intervals, and but they also have to require so many players to be on the line. And this is kind of to stop people just camping uh, and doing it, doing these events really early in the morning when no one's on, and sort of farming them, which I think is sort of enforcing a. If if it if it were to be that way, then people were kind of just being forced to play at silly times during the day, like really early in the morning or or midday or stuff stuff like that, where where there's not going to be many players, which I don't think is a sort of a healthy way to encourage players to play. The start instance represents the when a new player joins for the first time to your server. That'll be the instance that they start in. An instance is a sector, so uh, typically this is number one. Um, the map will actually generate you like a base spawn platform, and that's number one. And the start position is the X, Y, and Z. X and Z are horizontal, Y is vertical. The position of, the, of the, where they're going to start in that spawn. So that's all of the settings, and we've set them up to how we like them. So we're going to close that. Uh, the server has to, like, to actually load the server settings changes, you have to restart the server. So we're going to go uh, back to the main server folder. So now we're going to start the, uh, the server. Uh, up oh, now we set all the settings that we wanted. I'm gonna choose no for that because so we don't need any uh we don't need any capital gates in this instance. You also might get map settings uh XML is missing. Don't worry about that, that's something that, that used to be part of the, the map file and it still checks for but isn't really anything to do uh to, it's not it doesn't matter that it's missing. So now we've got the server started up, it's running and we can actually join it now. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly open up Steam, which actually is in my other monitor, so you can't see it. But so now we're logged in. Um, we can't see the server on there because I actually set it to private. Uh, 
in the public in as I said, said public to false. But what we can actually do is we can join it. The direct connect allows us to join via IP, and because we know it's running on my machine, one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one just means local machine. We can click connect. Now this is also important if you're if you're playing from your own machine, you can't connect to your server from the server lobby as most routers don't allow you to connect to your own IP. So what you want to do is just do the same as this, but your friends can join from the server lobby just fine. Just make sure obviously your ports are forwarded. So this takes a few seconds to load up. So now we've uh, we've loaded into our fresh server. Uh, as you can see, there's not, nothing here. You just, uh, the the spawn sort of starts off with a platform, and that's it. It's, it's really sort of empty for you to build on. And because we set up the admin, we're at, I'm actually an admin already. So if we press M, we can see that the uh, ooh, a little bit uncentered there. We can see that we've actually got a bunch of systems already pre-made, and these will be like random biomes uh, based on the seed that we gave with random names. So probably one of the first things you want to do is sort of understand what what you can do as an admin. Um, the easiest way to do that is just to click. As, oh, the other thing is you can see the, the what the message of the day is. It should be set in the server settings, which is there. Uh, so anyway, as an admin, you want to be able to understand what commands are available to you, um, and you just type slash help for that, which gives you just this huge list with the descriptions for all the commands, um, which is awesome. So, uh, like just a off the bat, a few useful ones are. Uh, you can actually look these up on the wiki as well. Um, for, instance, for instance, like let's, I can give you some examples of some. So, there's obviously the the simple ones like slash ban, which would be sign and then username, so we could ban myself or slash mute and things like that, which allow you to sort of have some control over what's going on in your server. You can also use things like uh, slash give to give yourself items. So, if we say energy well, which you have to type the full name of the item out. And then pl and then the amount. So I just gave myself one energy. Well, I already have one, so now I have two. Um, or give shotgun. Spell it right. <laughs> and now I have a shotgun. Okay, kind of, it's it's fairly simple. If you want to look at what the items name are, you can, item names are, you can just press B and then go to item database, and that'll tell you all the items in the game. You can just look at what the names are if you if you want to spawn them in. Um, as I said. Uh, you can use slash help to look at the names, uh, sorry, the commands, and you can also use the wiki which has the list. So yeah, I think that sort of ends the guide. Um, I might do another one on sort of like more advanced things like changing the set of names for systems and editing things like the items uh, and the blocks possibly in the future, I'm not sure. Uh, if you're interested in, in, in having that as a video, please let me know. Um, Thanks for watching, thanks for checking out the game, thanks for buying the game if you have. Um hope you host the server and I hope it's I hope it's a lot of fun for you. Bye bye.